All right, welcome back to the Clara CFO Group channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about what costs you can include for your PPP. Now, what payroll costs in particular? And we have already talked about it in theory. We're gonna look at real payroll reports this time. We're gonna look at three different accounting systems, three different payroll systems, and look at actual reports coming from those systems. And we're gonna look at which wages should be included and which taxes should be included and which should be excluded. So this has been one of those questions that you guys have been asking me ever since the PPP started back in April, which costs exactly do I need to include for forgiveness? And now we are going to walk it through, okay? So if this type of information is helpful to you, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. We're all about helping the small business make strategic financial decisions and good financial decisions for their financial well-being. So if that sounds interesting, this channel is for you. Go ahead and subscribe and make sure you also click on the little bell to get notified about new videos. All right, let's get started. Well, if you've ever looked at payroll reports, you might be like me and have gotten a little confused sometimes. <laughs> There's lots of numbers on there and they're not always really clearly labeled. You've got employee versus employer. You've got contributions and withholdings. You've got taxes assessed on the employer and on the employee side. And you've got lots of different uh, deductions and things that have acronyms and Frankly, they just get it gets really confusing when you start to look at payroll and the bigger the organization, the more complicated the payroll. So if you've looked at payroll reports and your head started spinning, you are not alone. <laughs> so we're going to demystify the payroll reports today and we're going to talk through which numbers you need to pay attention to. We can we can disregard a lot of them, but we need to pay attention to a number of them. OK, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to pop into a screen share and go through those in just a minute. So I wanted to remind you guys, what is an actual eligible payroll cost when it comes to the PPP loan? So this is from, this is the, the term directly from the interim rule and the guidance um, from the treasury. What qualifies as payroll cost? Payroll costs consist of compensation to employees in the form of salaries, wages, commissions, or similar compensation, cash tips, or the equivalent, payment for vacation, parental, family, medical, or sick leave, allowance for separation or dismissal, payment for the provision of employee benefits consisting of group health care coverage, including insurance premiums and retirement, payment of state and local taxes assessed on compensation of employees. A lot of this is going to show up on the actual payroll journal, on your payroll reports. So that's what we want to look at. And we're going to pull out what we need to know from those reports. So I do not want to waste any more time. Let's go over to those reports. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start with an example of a payroll journal from Paychex. So I know Paychex is a big provider for small businesses and medium sized businesses as well. What I did here is this is actually just a screen capture and a couple things put together because obviously I don't want to give away any actual information on payroll here. So we have, uh, this is a company that has nine employees. You can see over here. So what we really need to pay attention to is the company totals on these reports. And Paychex calls this a payroll journal. Every time a payroll is run, this is the report that comes out of it. And then at the very bottom, this is usually on the last page, there is company totals. And this is the section that we are really interested in. And when we talk about payroll for the PPP, we include gross earnings or gross wages in our calculation. So gross wages is before taxes are taken out. A lot of people were thinking that they could only do net pay, which is after everything is taken out. They could only include net pay for their employees, but that's not true. We can actually do total gross wages. So for paychecks, you will find gross wages in this column, and you'll find that here. Now this only has two separate types of pay, hourly and salary pay, but if there had been vacation taken during this time or um, maybe sick leave or something like that, it would also be listed here as another earning type. Now, this total is here, this 12,432, and hopefully you guys can see this okay. Um, but that is the total gross wages for the period. 
Now we need to say, okay, what else needs to be included? These withholdings that are over here are withholdings for the individual employees. So we don't need to worry about these. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and cross this out. And then all of this is actually for insurance. And you see how it says EE -E on the end? Anything that, when anytime it says EE, -E, that's representing the employee side. And if you see ER, that's the employer side. This is also something we don't need to worry about. <clears throat> and then the net pay, we don't need to worry about. I'm just crossing those out. Sorry for my X's. <laughs> they look like really strange chromosomes. Then we get down here to employer liabilities. And this is really where, where we need to pay attention. So Social Security and Medicare are federal, and we cannot include those for PPP. So we cannot include those costs. However, we can include the state, and this report happens to be in Nevada, so that's what NV stands for, and there are two state and local taxes listed on here. So we can include those for the purposes of PPP payroll costs. So my highlighter is not very fine here, but we are going to include these two costs, okay? So gross wages and state and local employer taxes, that's paychecks. Let's go over to QuickBooks Online. All right, so QuickBooks Online actually downloads into an Excel format, and I formatted it a little bit so that we could see the column titles a little bit better, and then I put it into a PDF for viewing. Now, this is an example of an employee employer that has more line items on their payroll report. They have regular pay, overtime pay, double overtime pay, salaries, bonuses, allowances, and then also reimbursements, and then we're gonna talk about this in a second, as well as tips. So they have lots of different wage types. All of these are included in payroll, except for payroll costs for the PPP, except for reimbursement, because we know that this employee, actually this is business expenses that the employee just pays for and then gets reimbursed for as he travels. So we know that this, in this case, is not includable for PPP because it's not cash compensation for labor. It is, and it's not compensation for labor at all or leave or anything like that. It's just that he paid for company expenses on his credit card and he's getting reimbursed for it. So this needs to be excluded from our total, okay? And that's something that you have to know about your own business as you read through these pay types. Is there something on there that should be excluded? If it's, if it's something like a reimbursement, it should be excluded, but a lot of the rest of this is all totally includable in the payroll cost for the PPP, including tips, guys, and then any other cash. So this allowance is a cash compensation to cover the employee's health care benefits. So it's not part of a group insurance program, but they are paying the employee cash to go out and buy insurance on the exchange. And that is okay, it's like a stipend for healthcare. So that is on here and it's totally okay. All right, so this would have to be, just the reimbursements would have to be reduced from the total. But this is the gross pay area for QuickBooks Online. And then you have deductions for retirements and this employee paid taxes we don't have to pay attention to. We don't have to, um, pay attention to some of these company paid taxes. So FUTA, Social Security, and Medicare, we do not pay any attention to, but this is the state unemployment is SUI, and then there's an admin fee as well. There's also workers' compensation, but so far workers' compensation has not been included as an actual payroll cost. Even though this is a state-funded insurance, workers' comp insurance, it still has not been included. But then there's a paid family medical leave, which is a state, and this is the employer portion of it. So had there been a number here, that would also have been included. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and circle the things that we are going to include. All right, so I got a little bit of a finer pen here, and we're going to include all of these through allowance, and then we're gonna include the tips in our payroll costs. We are only gonna take out the reimbursement. And then we're gonna go over here, I get my notation here, and then we're going to include state unemployment and admin. And then had there been a number here, we also would have included paid family medical leave. Okay, workers' compensation, like I said, has not yet been included anywhere. 
and um, but all other state and local taxes that we know of should be included by default. So if it's state and local and the employer is paying for it, please include it. And on QuickBooks, I did want to point out too that here they have a retirement contribution from the company. So this would also be included as a payroll cost here. All right, so that's QuickBooks. Okay, we're going over now to the Gusto, and this was actually pulled directly from their demo company, so I'm not showing any secret information here. These are all fake employees, fake payroll. <laughs> um, but this is a this is exactly what their payroll journal looks like. So this has lots of detailed information for all the employees. So we're gonna just scroll all the way to the bottom. I like that we pulled a full payroll report because I actually wanted to show you guys, you know, this is what it actually looks like when you get the full thing. Um, I had to do cutting and slicing of the other two because I didn't want to give away any important information. Um, but this is what a normal payroll journal might look like. All right, so we're all the way down here at the bottom. And we are here at payroll totals. And then this is regular. And you see how it says gross pay. This is the gross pay column over here. And, you know, you usually will get that too. If you scroll, you'll usually be able to tell that this is the gross pay because usually there's column headers, but sometimes the col column headers don't, uh, they're at the very top of the report. So that's a little bit annoying, um, but you have to go to the top of the report and then just see the column headers there and you'll figure it out. So we're gonna be really focused on this employer taxes column and then this first earnings column. Okay, let's scroll all the way back down. And so we're gonna look at gross wages here and then we have a couple different things. We've got employer contributions. So this is for the 401k. This is a retirement contribution for employers. This is a traditional. And then in this situation, they have a Roth 401k and a traditional. So you would include both of these as retirement costs. These are legitimate payroll costs. And then again, we're not going to be including, this is the employee column, if you remember, employer column, if you remember and Social Security, Medicare, FUTA are not includable, but we do wanna add in, this is California unemployment, and then California ETT. I'm not exactly sure what that stands for, um, but these two costs would be included as state and local taxes. All right, so that is the Gusto report. All right, well, I hope that was helpful. That's three different reports out of three different payroll systems. Hopefully you gleaned something that will help you in your business. If you did like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. We are so happy to have you here, so happy to have you watching. And please leave us a comment below. If there's something that you would like to see specifically, we read the comments. So we would love to take notes and hopefully be bringing you additional information that's super helpful to your small business. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.